Christy here from the Jackson County Library System, and I'm gonna show you how to make May's Tween and Teen Craft Kit, which is a mountain photo holder. And those craft kits are completely free. You can pick them up at any point during May until we run out of them. So in your kit, if you pick one of these up at the library, so you'll get the instructions, some air dry clay, the paint you need, a paintbrush, and some wire. And I've got enough supplies in here to actually make two photo holders. But there are a few things I'd like you to go grab before we get started. And one is to go get a paper towel and get it a little damp. We're gonna use that on our air dry clay later. Then grab a Sharpie or some sort of cylinder that's about this size. So we're gonna use that when we twist this top part of the wire. And finally, go grab a cup of water that you can use to wash out your paintbrush when we are mixing and painting later on. So first things first, after you go grab that stuff, if you want, you could cover your workspace with some newspaper or something because air dry clay can get messy, but you're gonna unwrap it and you can kind of work it in your hands here and make sure it's nice and movable. And like I said, I gave you enough to do two of them. So you can just rip it in half and make two mountains about the same size. Or if you want one to be bigger and one to be smaller, you can do that too. So you've got two two lumps and you need just one of them. And the nice thing about these mountains is they're not perfect by any means. That's like in nature. They're bumpy, they don't have to be perfectly straight. So the sculpting of the mountain can be relatively quick. So you're gonna just, let me get my paper here. Okay, so you can just press it down so it has a nice flat bottom. And that's gonna make sure it doesn't wobble, right? It stays pretty steady there. We don't want it to tip over. So we're gonna make that nice and flat on the bottom. And then you can just kind of pinch it up until you get to a narrow top. And you don't want it to be too narrow because you wanna be able to still stick your wire in it. So here you can see I'm just moving the clay around and I'm twisting it so I can try and make it somewhat similar on all the sides. So I've got all that. I'm just kind of pushing it down into the bottom again so it's nice and steady when it dries. And I've got a little bit of flat surface there on the top. It's not a exact point or anything. And again, that's for the wire. So easy as that, I've got a mountain shape. So now I'm gonna take that damp paper towel and just kind of seal the clay together and smooth it out some. You don't need to smooth it out perfectly because mountains have bumps and crags and some cracks in them. So you can just do this a light touch here, smoothing them out. Okay. So now you can see, still got some bumps, but I took out a lot of those cracks and kind of sealed the clay together a bit better. So there's that one. And you could go ahead at this point and do your whole other mountain and sculpt that one too. But I'm just gonna show you one. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my wire ready. So I can just set that aside, grab my Sharpie, and I'm just gonna wrap one end right here and just hold it and twist it around. And I'm gonna wrap it around a good four times. That should be about perfect. Cause you can kind of see that gives it some above the mountain. So we can do that now. We can just slip it off. And you're gonna wanna pinch these together. Keep them nice and tight like that. And your photos will slip right in between there. So now I wanna make sure this is fairly straight. This tail end. Grab my mountain. 
and just go for the middle of my peak here and press down and you're just gonna go all the way through your mountain and there I hit the ground or the table in this case and there we go so now you're just going to leave it to dry I can see some more cracks I'm just gonna fix there so the air dry clay like in the name like the name says just dries while sitting it dries pretty nice so here you can make sure it's nice and sealed up to that too hold that this will dry overnight and then the next day you can come in and you can do the painting process so that is our air dry clay mountain next step is going to be the painting so i'm just going to pause here and then i'll do the painting with our dried mountain okay after you've let your mountain sit overnight and get dry we are going to go on to the painting and so you are going to be painting it with a couple different colors here that we're going to achieve by mixing the paint so you've got just this plain white paint and then we've got a light gray and a dark gray that you're gonna make out of the white and black paint that I've given you. So you're gonna wanna grab a, a paper plate or if you have a palette to mix paint on, you can grab that. And so for the light gray, you're gonna want more of that because that's the bulk of both of your mountains. So you're gonna want a lot of white and just a bit of black to make it into a nice light gray. And then for your dark gray, you're gonna want a smaller amount of white and then some black to make it just a darker color than the rest. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you leave some white in your container because that'll be the tops of your mountain. So I'm just going to speed it up here quick while I mix the paint. Okay, so I have my paint all mixed together. And I am going to start off with painting the top of the mountain. So you're going to go with the white first. I'm just going to use this. And you can be very loose with that paint. You don't have to be in a straight line or anything because the snow just falls as it falls on your mountain. And it's probably going to take a couple of coats. As you can see, I'm just kind of letting the snow flow as it wants to, this paint here. Not worried too much about it being perfect and straight. They can just let it be what it wants to be here. Okay, and like I said, you'll probably want to do two coats on there to make sure it covers completely. And then you'll be able to go on to your light gray color. You're gonna to wanna to wash your brush, of course, in between. That's why you got that water. And then if you still have your paper towel from, or grab a new paper towel, you can dry your brush in between. Now this one takes a little bit more patience. But again, if you go up into the white, not a big deal, because it doesn't need to be any sort of straight, perfect line. And if you have both of your mountains sculpted and dried, you could do each of these steps on both of them. Or if you'd prefer, you could do one whole mountain at a time. You can see it's pretty easy painting on there. And now with some of this, you might have to stop, let paint dry, and then keep moving forward. So like we're gonna have to let all of this gray dry before we go in with the dark gray. Get all of that. 
And you might want to paint just slightly underneath so that the color goes all the way for your mountain. Okay, so I'm going to finish painting this and then let it dry and then I'll come back and do the dark gray. So there we're getting somewhere on our little mountain. Okay, so I let my gray paint dry and then I did a second coat of the gray and the white. Um, it just gives it a nicer finish if you do both of them as a second coat. So once you've got that done, then you can add your little lines of the dark gray. And it doesn't have to be much. You can do like in the picture where they just do little dashes all along. Or you can do like the one I did. I just kind of followed some of the grooves and gave some little lines. It just adds some dimension to your mountain. So you can add in some of that dark gray as you go. Just a few little lines. And then once you have this part done and you're satisfied with your painting, if you haven't been doing your other mountain at the same time, you could go and do the whole process again with that one. And there are just some little lines. So this just adds to that dimension, like you said there. And we wait for this to dry. And then you can grab a photo, or maybe even you could put it on your desk and keep some notes in there. Or like I said, you can do no lines. You can do whatever lines you want. But there we've got some. Add some interest factor there to our little mountain. All right, so that'll dry. Your clay should be all dry too because you let that sit overnight. You've got your wire here ready for a photo. So when it's all dry, you can stick one in there. If you stick it in and then you pinch that wire together, it'll hold it there. And you've got your very own mountain photo holder. So have fun with this craft for May. We will be back again with summer crafts and you can get all signed up for summer reading starting on June 1st. We've got some really fun events that you can see on our website, which is jclmn.org slash summer. And we have some really fun stuff coming up for tweens and teens. We've got a photo contest. We're gonna virtually travel to Alaska, to the Alaska Sea Life Center, learn about sea lions, and even do a squid guy section if you want to pick up your very own squid at the library. And we're also doing a night hike over at the Prairie Ecology Bus Center. And if none of those are your things and you like to just keep doing the crafts, we're going to have brand new craft kits every single month during the summer. So you can do all of that. You can get a reading log and log minutes of reading all summer long and earn prizes, which we've got some fun stuff there too. So we've got a lot of things coming up, but for May, we have a mountain photo holder that you now know how to make. You can grab those at any of the three Jackson County libraries. See you next time. Thank you.